Hey everyone, Joe Camacho with Target Specialty Products here. Hoping this video finds you, your family, and your team all doing well. Today I thought I would introduce a series of videos dedicated to reviewing mosquito larvicides and their mode of action, along with which formulations are available from Target Specialty Products. In this video series, I'm going to review biorational larvicides or biopesticides, insect growth regulators, and finally mineral oils. And I thought we could start with the biorational larvicide Bacillus sphericus. So stay tuned and we'll jump right into it. First biorational larvicide, Bacillus sphericus. Your first question might be, what exactly is a biorational pesticide? Well, the EPA defines a biorational pesticide or a biopesticide as a pesticide that is naturally occurring substance that controls pests. It's a microorganism that controls pests, or it's pesticidal substance that's produced by plants that contain added genetic material or plant incorporated protectants or PIPs. So in reality, it boils down to it's any substance or organism that has pesticidal properties. That's a biorational pesticide. And Bacillus sphericus is just that, a naturally occurring spore forming bacterium found in soils. During the course of sporulation, sphericus produces a perisporal body or a crystal that contains two mosquitocidal proteins called bin A and bin B. Neither protein alone is toxic to larvae, so both are required for toxicity. Mosquito larvae must ingest these crystals that contain the two proteins in order for the toxic effect to happen. Once ingested, these toxins are solubilized in the alkaline midgut and bind to specific receptors of the epithelial cells of the midgut or the outer layers of the cells of the digestive tract. This binding of the toxins cause pores to develop in the lining of the digestive tract of the, of the larvae, resulting in osmotic disbalance, lysis of the cells or a rupture of the cells, and ultimately death of the larvae. In the presence of concentrated toxin, this effect can happen in as little as 15 minutes. One advantage Spiricus has is its ability to persist and recycle in the environment. It seems that cadavers of mosquito larvae provide the nutrients and conditions for vegetative growth and sporulation in Bacillus Spiricus, which in turn help keep the concentrated toxins available for other larvae. The challenge? Keeping the concentrated toxins in the feeding zone. The settling of the toxins out of the feeding zone will reduce the longevity of control. So recycling of spiricus can work well in situations where there is a continuous introduction of larvae. In this perfect scenario, you'll see first and second instar larvae, those that are actively feeding and becoming the future cadavers that will allow sporulation to continue. When you see third and fourth instar larvae, recycling is slowed or is pretty much stopped. Currently, Target Specialty Products offers a granular option in two formulations. It's called Spheratax SPH 50G, and it comes in a loose granular 40-pound bag or in a case of 800 WSP packets. The WSP packets are great for street stormwater basins. Remember, Spiricus can recycle in high larval density environments where there is a continuous introduction of new larvae, just like in these stormwater basins. The loose granular option is great for sites such as animal waste lagoons or dairy lagoons, sites that have high organic matter and high larval densities. Spiritax is also a great option for dormant rice fields that have been reflooded for decomposition or waterfowl habitat. So there you have it, Bacillus spiricus, what it is, how it works, and where to use it. If you have any questions about Spiritax SPH 50G, don't hesitate to reach out to me via phone or email. Next time we'll go over the backbone of mosquito control, BTI. Until then, thanks and make it a great day.